2022 was a really interesting year for us. Uh, we didn't release as many updates as we have historically, but some of the ones we did were among the biggest updates we've ever done. And we also had a lot of really fun uh, community events and things going on. And so we thought we would do this year in review at the end of uh, 2022 to sort of go over what happened in the world of State of Decay 2 over the past 12 months. Starting with, uh, in January... We announced the Infestations update and added it to the PTR, which is kind of a funny thing to talk about now because it's been a year and the Infestations update has not actually come out yet. Uh, we Our last stream was all about that and, and what our plans are for it, the reasons why uh, it's taken as long as it has. But for people who are playing in the public test realm, which is an alternate version of the game you can play on Steam uh, to sort of see advanced features before they're ready for prime time, uh, that has been a part of the game and part of the experience for a long time. And in fact, we've been gathering feedback religiously from the folks that have been playing in the public test realm so that we can use that to inform our decisions about the final version of the Infestations update when it comes. And so even though this happened a long time ago in January, and it's been a while, that time that you all have spent playing in the public test realm, giving us feedback, and letting us see uh, sort of the data that you generate as you run around and interact with these features. It's been amazing for us. Uh, you know, like Joe and, and, and the team over there have been all, you know, working really hard on continuing to develop this feature based in large part on what they're seeing you all doing. Uh, and then after January, we had February which is, you know, the month afterwards. Uh, and I had actually forgotten that this had happened this year. This was update 29, uh, 11 months ago, or was that 10, 10 months ago? 10 months ago, it's December. Uh, 10 months ago in February, we released an update that gave a graphical overhaul to all three of the original maps. We've got Cascade Hills uh, on the screen right now. Uh, we also did Drucker County. Uh, and you can see each of them got like a full new lighting pass and a bunch of other tweaks to just make them look just a lot fancier uh, than they even could uh, when the game first came out. You're taking advantage of uh, you know, a lot of the expertise on, with some of our outside partners who came in to help us. Uh, and we also took advantage of just, you know, things that people have learned over the intervening years. You know, game video games get better and look better all the time uh, for very good reasons. And we're, we're trying to continue to ride that wave because you all have been playing this game for years. You want it to look as good as the games that are coming out today. Uh, and that's a, a big part of what we tried to accomplish there. So yeah, we overhauled the original maps. Uh, we also added field of view settings to the game. So uh, if you wanted to get this big pulled out view, you could, or you could just zoom in really, really tight, like uh, to create a sense of claustrophobia, whatever you wanted, uh, you could do that. And I really, yeah. I really like that giving that player the, you know, the ability to just customize whatever experience they want. And, and I really think that like some of these before and afters are really strong because it's almost like, you're seeing the atmosphere in the map. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like we didn't. Like you're, it, it, it doesn't look like a, like a, like an iPhone photo where it's like crisp all the way back. It looks how like your eyes see it. You know. So I think I uh, think that was an awesome update. Yeah. No. Exactly. The way that they're sort of uh, taking advantage of a mix of you know lighting and like fog and things to really give the world a sense of like depth and realism that's sort of hard to get with just plain old video game graphics. It's like we got we had some real experts working on this and uh, I really appreciate all the work that they put in. Uh, and finally, one of my favorite features that came in with this update was also, uh, that was not what I meant to hit. <laughs> Push the button, but I got an extra, we got added a bonus wonder to the game, uh, apparently is what we did. No, what we did was we added smashing fences uh, with, with heavy weapons. Uh, and so that was that was kind of a fun one because people were swinging their big old sledgehammers at these wooden fences and the has fences it, weren't reacting has it at really all. Been ten, has it really been 10 months since I've been able that I've been able to do that. Oh yeah, so I was actually freaking out. Um, I was playing on my personal stream uh, during lunch today and I was freaking out because I realized that plague territory hasn't been in the game forever. And I've gotten so used to having to think like, oh, I got to take out a plague cart before I can claim an outpost, before I can claim a base. Oh, this area is scary because I'm in plague territory. And I realized we shipped the game without that. We shipped the game for years without that feature. And now it just feels like it's part and parcel of the game. Uh, and, and that's what happens with a lot of this stuff. It's good to do these like year in review sessions to go over what we accomplished because it's like, it's, it's, it's really easy to just sort of forget once something gets into the game, it just becomes a part of the experience. And you forget that somebody worked hard on that and put a lot of effort into adding it into the game long after release. Also in February, and this is less about the development team and more about Wonder's efforts, 
we got into the Xbox Gear Shop. Uh, see, this is a, just a screenshot that I grabbed of the Xbox Gear Shop. A couple of our mo most popular uh, shirts, which are sort of the Xbox orb with the State of Decay cover uh, sort of impressed upon it. But there's a ton of like cool, weird pieces of merch like our uh, our Fork in the Road coasters uh, and, and stuff like that. Like, wonder you you put sort of the most effort into into making this thing happen. You were you know advocating for this for ages. Like like how did that feel to finally get our merch store? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Wonder. Ah. Yeah, story of my life working remotely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, wonder you're muted is my new uh, call sign. Uh, so. <laughs> I, sh I should put that in State of Decay. Actually, if somebody gets a character named Wonder, you're muted should be one of their That's nicknames. Perfect. Well, you know, I, I, someone shared with me an amazing screenshot a while ago where they had rolled a couple of wonders in their community, and I loved it. But yeah, <laughs> you're muted should be a trait that we add. <laughs> if I keep hitting the wrong button, we'll have a couple of wonders in our community too. Uh, oh, look at all the wonders! It's so wonderful up in here. Oh man, I'm, I'm allowed to make these jokes. Yes, no. absolutely. I can make card jokes, and you can make wonder jokes. One hundred percent. Wonder, hundred percent. Yes. So it was. So Xbox also went through like a big shift, and they are with in terms of like merch, and so we were super excited to be able to like roll into that and be part of this new kind of like, you know, project that they're doing with the gear shop. And it just gives us so much more freedom and flexibility. We have great designs that have been in the gear shop this year that Megan has made. Just a lot of you know Megan and we have more to come next year. And the gear shop team is great. Uh, we've got a good time working with them. Um, and we will have a code coming out very soon to let everyone know how to get 10% off State of Decay 2 merch before the end of the year. Awesome. Okay, well, we're going to have to... Should people watch social media for that? Check our social media. You know, if we are if we get, you know, enough interest, I think we might drop it at the end of this stream. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube uh, or on Twitch, I guess, uh, you look at the description below. We'll have links to our social media. You can go and follow us there. It brought a tear to Joe's eye. I saw that. <laughs> All right, well, uh, here comes the month of May. Uh, so the month of May, the main thing that was exciting about that was it was our fourth anniversary uh, since State of Decay 2 came out. That's four years of uh, us continuously having a team working on supporting State of Decay 2. Most of the work they're doing uh, being free. Just to anybody who had already bought the game, you just get these free updates. And we've been doing that for four solid years. And that just felt really, really good. And it was actually nine years the following month. It was nine years since the original State of Decay came out. This franchise has been a part of our lives for so, so long. Uh, uh, you know, because it even goes back five years before that for the people who were working with people like Brandt and Doug Williams who were like working on this game from the very beginning. Uh, this has just been a part of our lives for ages. And uh, it's been just amazing having you all uh, along for it. And we're not done yet. Like, we, there, There's no indication that we're about to stop. Like we're, our team has got plans going out through next year. And like we're just continuously doing look at joe nodding up there you don't see yeah, an end I mean, to your schedule we're, here. we're at update 32 just think uh, about that like the, yeah, just no. something 32 that's huge uh no i don't i don't see a i don't see an end to our work anytime soon you know there was there there are a lot of things you know like it's not very often that people get to go back and work on projects that they wanted to fix up or whatever uh but that's exactly what undead labs has been doing now for 32 updates and um you know we've We've got the PTR thing that uh, will be released at some point um, that we're, we're still working on the infestations. Uh, and we're going to just, I don't know, we, 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 as far as I can tell, like our, our calendar is full until somebody tells us to stop and uh, nobody's told us to stop. Yet. Yeah, no one's even giving us the slightest indication that we would stop anytime Ivan soon. Ivan Sparrow said just stop, but then he said, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's like every, you know, it's kind of funny for a long time, every time we issued an update, just like there would be this chorus of, oh, that was the last update. Game is dead. I think people have finally learned, though, like we just don't stop. <laughs> it just keeps on coming out. And, you know, sometimes up, some updates are smaller than others, but the updates are still coming and we're still working really hard on this game. When I say we, I mean Joe and and, and his team. Uh, I, I, of course, am working on something else, but we, we'll get into that much later. Um, the month of July 
was all about Bleed to Lead, uh, which was our charity drive with the Red Cross. In fact, I just got a package in the mail from the Red Cross. I think they might have sent us another thank you gift. They were really excited about our contribution uh, to, to this. I mean, you guys, all of you out there who donated, uh, who you got ended up getting up above $14,000. Um, mm -hmm. Wonder, I got that number right. It was like 14300 or yeah, something like that. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It was absolutely incredible. I mean, we love partnering with them. They're such an amazing organization. Uh, everyone we have worked over there, just on a personal level, is uh, so kind, so committed to their mission, so generous. Um, and the fact is, it was really amazing to me to see so many people have personal stories being like, you know, I need a blood transfusion. I knew someone who needed blood. And that's true for me. That's one of the reasons I got into it. Um, we first started partnering with them, I think it was 2020 and they sent this pin and, uh, there, oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the things that they said was so cool. They said, these can't be purchased. They have to be earned and, and it's earned for acts of service. And, you know, that is just dedicated to our incredible community who just came together, you know, when you see a need and, and it's very human and it's very personal. And it really, I feel like ties in so well with like the spirit of our game of looking out for the people next to you. Um, yeah, it's not so, just being a solo yeah. survivor, just sort of forging your way through the world. It's about yeah. building a community and supporting each other. Exactly. Save to K2 is not about being a lone wolf. It's about, it's about saving your community. So I think it's just was fantastic. I love this partnership so much and everyone that we have been uh, able to work with and the fact that we can really map, you know, how this affects others, knowing how many blood drives that we can fund, which was this year's uh, goal, you know, to have three, we can fund three blood drives with this and, you know, a little bit over that and that that will actually, you know, benefit many, many, many people who are in critical condition. I just can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for caring so much and joining us in this uh, mission. It was just, it was, it's, it's always really incredible when we can do these things together. Yeah. I, I'm really not looking forward to when it'll be finally time for me to cut the pink out of my hair, which, uh, you know, for, oh, for those of you who don't know, yeah, like you got the mohawk I got that, that pink mohawk from uh, like as, as sort of a prize for people donating. We actually, we hit some amazing targets during that stream. And so I totally went and got my, I got, I've taken a lot of crap from people on Twitter for having the, the, the pink hair. They love to make fun of people who have colorful hair, but it was totally worth it for, for uh, it was. giving a payoff to that. You folks. That was an amazing incentive. I was super <laughs> into that. <laughs> By the way, I should apologize. On my personal stream, I actually was also offering to put people's names in State of Decay 2 uh, as, as a, a prize for donating. And unfortunately, because we haven't done any full updates to the game since August, I still haven't put any of their names in the game. Like, it's in the build that we have locally, but it, it, it hasn't actually come out yet. So sometime we'll this next that. year, okay. you will get your names in the game. I promise. So, Matt, oh, what'd you say, Joe? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, Joe might actually just strip them all out because he can't. Yeah. Um, but uh, so the next month after that was actually one of the biggest months we'd had in a while, which was update 30. So, uh, you know, this month, uh, this past couple of months, we've had a couple of small updates that only contained like, you know, outfits and a few tweaks, that sort of thing. But update 30, that was the big one this year. That was Forever Communities. It included the ability to continue a community after a legacy. So you did no longer had to just sort of hold on, you know, and like not and actively avoid winning the game. You can just win the game as much as you want and just win and win and win again and keep the same people together for a long-term story that you're t sort of telling together. Uh, you can recruit people from the legacy pool, put them back into the legacy pool. I've, just, I've seen some players doing some really interesting thing with the legacy pool. Like for instance, Magic Man 79 uh, who I think is in the chat, has got a community uh, led by Dr. Freud, um, where all of the other characters in the community are, are men named Dick. Uh, and it's amazing. It's one of the best communities I've ever seen. Only possible because of legacy recruits, because you can use the, the the sort of the random character generator all you want, make communities made of whatever people's names you want, uh, and then recruit them freely. And so uh, people have been very creative with legacy recruits. Jeffrey, did he did he share the name of the um, the community with you? Oh, oh, he did. Yes, he did. It was yeah. great. 
Um, so yeah, Magic Man, kudos to you. Uh, Wonder, my apologies for saying something uncouth on the stream. Um, but I'll just move right by that. That is a perfectly legitimate name. You know, uh, we had a president who went by that name. Uh, so it's totally okay for me to have said that on the air. Um, <laughs> we also had... And the, and the vice president. Filters. Oh, that's true. Even more recently. Uh, we, we had, you know, filters and other organizational tools and the legacy pool also in the supply locker. Uh, we added, we went up to five save slots so you can maintain more communities at once and just way more. It was a really big update, just full of all kinds of quality of life improvements, things like that. Uh, and so that, this was the update that we really sort of hung our hats on this year. And I got to say, like, as a player of the game, not being on the team anymore, this is one of the updates that I've appreciated the most. It's given me so much sort of freedom and power to play the game, you know, my own way, uh, and sort of on a meta level, enjoy the game in a different way than I did before. Uh, so it's, it, it was probably one of our most exciting months uh, that we had in 2022. So the following month, we had a fun community event, which was our coloring contest. I just really wanted to share this because people in the community, in our community are so creative. We have so many people that we just, you know, we love to throw these contests partly just because of the crazy stuff that you all come up with. Um, so yeah, I mean, we had, you know, th this submission here with this juggernaut, uh, that, you know, that T-Rexpresso with the clouds in the background. These are just two of the options. Like, uh, Heather gave me the entire list and I just grabbed two of them that looked really nice uh, for my background. But there were so many cool submissions. Uh, we, just, we love working with this community and all of the things that you all are capable of creating. So thank you so much uh, for participating in this stuff. And then uh, we actually did another similar event in October. First off, we did update 31, of course, which in, which added uh, a bunch of you know new variants of outfits into the game, so you can dress your people up as cleverly as you want to, including this pink mechanics outfit and pink aviator helmet. Uh, but we also did uh, another contest. We did a, a pumpkin carving contest and a flash fiction contest, and uh, it, again got tons of really creative entries, uh, including this one over here with the the, the firefighter, which I think that's a high angle rescue hatchet, uh, hacking at that uh, at that pumpkin. That is just amazing. You know, uh, so Megan on our team uh, exported these images and then turned them into stencils and then tested it at home on pumpkins with her family. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> amount of legwork behind the scenes to get these right. And then she was like, hey, what do you think about these? And we were like, those look amazing. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, and Megan never phones it in. Like, 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 like Megan was not going to yeah. put something out there that she had not tested so herself. Good. <laughs> yeah, and then the community just took it even further and ran with it, and it was absolutely amazing to see. Because you know, behind the scenes, we don't always know what's going to land. We, you know, we think, hey, this is fun. We like this idea, but you know, will it? You know, will it pick up or not? Will people think this is, you know, a fun thing or not? And we were a little bit worried about, you know, there's a little bit of barrier to entry. Like my pumpkins carving skills are non-existent. <laughs> you know? Yeah, mine so, are fair to midland like, at best. <laughs> um, what if I just do like a little watercolor doodle on my pumpkin? I'm just going to put pumpkins by my house. That's kind of like my speed. Do you, do you like triangles? Because that's what you get from me. <laughs> right? Three <laughs> triangles is a jack o lantern to me. So to see the incredible creativity and skill and ingenuity and then the staging, like this photo that you chose, I loved it. What an amazing <laughs> contribution. Just fantastic. And then finally, we've got this past month, November. Uh, which again had another small update that was mostly full of outfits, uh, which actually it was, it was primarily hats. Uh, we all got hats in November, which was a lot of fun. I dressed up my own communities uh, in winter hats. Uh, and, and this is one of those little fun things where it's like, you know, we, uh, you know, what is like trying to get underneath her hat? Uh, we, it's all backwards. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's 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 all. It's not like a mirror. I set I've set myself up like a mirror, so it's really easy. But I didn't do that for you, so you're sort of uh, caught doing everything backwards. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's like this is one of those little fun things where it's like, uh, you know, outfits. That was another feature that got got added after release. It was I think it was right before the the Juggernaut edition landed, or was it even after? I don't even remember now. But uh, but you know, it, it's a thing that we did not ship with. But it's opened up so many yeah, fun yeah. Little possibilities for. I feel creativity. like our first update was wasn't it like called it called uh, we got you a sweater. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was one of yeah. Like we got <laughs> it was the first like, time we released the winter stuff. <laughs> yeah, the update was yeah. called we got you a sweater. 
This one was called Season of Giving. And actually, I haven't been using the official uh, names of these uh, things because because the one uh, the one in October, I think, was called uh, Dress to Kill. Uh, kind of proud of that one. That was that was bomb, Jeffrey. That you <laughs> you you crushed it. My favorite thing is naming stuff. <laughs> So, yeah. Very good. And that was November. And so now we have come up to the present and the near future. Uh, and so we've already talked a little bit, you know, last uh, last stream about some of the stuff that's coming up in the immediate future. So first off, the PTR update is coming soon. In fact, wonder you got we got permission to officially say the time frame in which the PTR update, which is going to include the latest version of Infestation, so you can give us more feedback on that feature before it comes out for reals. Uh, what is that time window, Wonder? What was it? Do you remember? Well, I do, because this is something truly that y'all have been asking for, and we have we want to be as transparent as we always can be with you. You know, we appreciate so much the relationship that we have here. And so we're always want to, you know, even when you know, like things like, hey, you know, we can't get infestations out as fast as we want to, but we're always tr as transparent as we possibly can be to be like, you know, we're working on it. Here's what was hard. So we're talking to the team this whole last week. You know, what can we do about this? What are we, you know, how are things looking? So they let us know, okay, there is going to be an update before the end of the year. Okay. And said, and it's going to come out in the next one to two weeks. Look for it. It's coming very soon. The newest version of Infestations and Sieges. And we cannot wait to get it into your hands and hear everything that you have to say about how that changes your gameplay, what you think about that. We're really stoked. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're in our PTR community on Steam, we're really looking forward to getting your feedback on it. And yeah, so it's a Christmas gift from us, basically. Before the, We were worried. We weren't sure we were going to make it before the end of the year, which is why we were hesitating to say anything. But it is coming out before the end of the year. Uh, you can play it over the Christmas break. Let us know what you think. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be watching the data, learning everything we can. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to see what see what you see what you think of it. Ryan Menard says he's ready. His body is ready. <laughs> yeah, we're we're ready too. We're we're really excited because it's it is a complicated thing. There's so many moving parts. It's very complex. When the more systems and you know parts of the game, you know these changes touch, the harder it is. So we're so excited to get it to you before the winter break. You know, we're going to be taking a break. We hope that you guys have all this great downtime with your family and your loved ones and and your favorite zombie game. And, you know, yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So no. it's really exciting. We're going to hear more about it. Um, yeah, and yeah. can't wait to get your take on things. Well, and I know that we have a bunch of streamers that are in chat right now. And uh, the last time, so correct me if I'm wrong, Wonder, but we're not putting any dump stream the beta anymore. No handles on people, right? So like, no, no. as long as your favorite this. streamer is on Steam and has the game, you can you can convince them to try to stream it for you if you, if you don't have <laughs> access. Absolutely. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah. So so make some noise. Get folks to uh to 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 stream the PTR and then sometime yeah, gift of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometime next year, the feature is going to come out for everybody. Once we've gathered that feedback, once we've made the sort of the last, uh, put the last polish on the feature, that feature is going to come out sometime next year. And then there's more stuff that we're working on that Joe knows about. I don't know about it. Uh, but uh, there's going to be you know, this game. Again, we do not have an end date on this. We're going to keep supporting it. And so Infestations is not the end. It's not the last feature that we're going to that we're going to put in. There's going to be plenty more to come in the future. So keep watching this channel. Keep watching all of our social media feeds. We're going to be giving you ev all the information that we can. And we're going to keep giving you more and more State of Decay 2 as time goes on. I will say this about the things that I know that are coming they do come from the wish list and they've been on the wish list for a while. Um, but we tend to take a while to fix things. So, you know, just because we're not address immediately addressing something that just went up on the wish list doesn't mean we're not addressing the wish list. Uh, it's just that we've prioritized other things and we're like, hey, y'all are right, but this stuff is bigger impact. So we need to focus here instead of here this other thing, right? So like, um, 
I guess that's a big plug for keep engaging with the wish list, folks. Like we are listening and, and we're doing our best to to stay up on things. Um, and, and it those, also is it's also a very know. important part. Right. Oh, uh, it's, it's also a, a, <laughs> you go, right, Joe. I'll, you go. I'll talk after you. Okay. It's also a very important part of what, how we're going to inform ourselves for state of K three uh, going forward. So. Um, you know, what you like about two, what you don't like about two helps us helps us make decisions uh, on a much more meta level about like what the game can and should be. So please keep engaging with the community and and the wish list. Go ahead, Jeffrey. All I was going to say was I've run into people who were recent uh, recently joined uh, members of our community who didn't know what the wish list was. And so I was going to say, if you go to support.stateofdecay.com, there is a link there that you can follow that takes you to the wish list, which is it's basically it's an upvoted list where uh, there's a bunch of longstanding stuff that a lot of people have voted for that like sort of rises to the top. So you can either upvote things that you care about that other people have written. You can add your own uh, ideas. You can sort of campaign for your own ideas if you want to. But we do pay attention to that stuff. It really does inform not only, you know, sort of the 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 priorities of Joe's team, but also my team looks at that stuff, too. Um, and so like the you know, you can really sort of help to shape uh the priorities of our franchise by telling us what it is you're looking for. And it doesn't guarantee we'll always give you everything you want when you want it, but us knowing what you want is a huge benefit to, to both us and you at, at getting this game right. So thank you. And so thank you all for a wonderful year. Um, any last words, uh, you two, about, uh, about 2022 before we move on to answering some questions and uh, getting into the game? That's a no. I mean, I think it's just, I would say, uh, I feel like Joe actually has something to say and he was formulating it, but I will come back. But, uh, you gotta, I, you gotta be fast to keep up with my I was aversion to silence. The thought that Joe had, you know, where it's like, yes, you know, if you don't, if you don't see immediate action on the wish list, that doesn't mean that things aren't happening. It can mean, you know, in terms of, you know, what we're trying to work on for with infestations or even what we worked on with, you know, forever communities that they can often be more complex than anyone, including ourselves, you know, estimate at the beginning. And it's so critical to get your feedback. Uh, and so we thank you so much for engaging and, and, and the feedback that comes back and forth. And the wish list is one of those points. It's a, one of those touch points for us where we get to hear directly from you. We get to, and then we try it out in the PTR. So this has all been like a, kind of a new experiment for us in terms of like a you know how we're maintaining the game and we just are very grateful that you're here that you're talking to us that you're you know keeping that dialogue open um you know we're we're working on the game for you we want it to be the absolute best experience it can be and thank you for playing um i'll just say one thing Thank you so much. Again, just kind of iterating everything that folks have been saying. But thank you so much to the community for continuing to play the game and to, um, you know, uh, advocate for like, hey, Undead Labs, y'all are doing a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the people who stream our game, the people who play our game, the people who go out and talk to their friends about it, like, you are the best ambassadors that we could ever hope for. And we want to keep you happy as so that you can keep talking to your friends about it and streaming the game, you know, like we want it to be a fun experience. And um, we, we just value everything about your presence here and your presence online and um, the fact that you enjoy playing this game that we all love too. Thank you, Joe. And we're also getting a chorus of responses in the chat of people saying, we love this game. Uh, you know, we love you in particular, Joe. So uh, thank you. All. Thank you all so much. <laughs>